to find your comfortable seated position. And it could be Sukhasana, easy seated pose, as you see Margaret and myself, or it could be child's pose, or it could be corpse pose, as you would in Shavasana. So as you settle in, feel your sitting bones rooting down. Feel your spine growing tall. And then feel the breath. Just allow the breath to start low in your belly. Let it rise up past your collarbones. And then with each exhale, feel the breath lower in your body from high to low, collarbones down to low belly. Take several of these big breaths. And as you feel the breath, let the breath fill you up with all that is good and healing on the inhale and let the breath on the exhale help you release. See how much you can let go with the next several rounds of breath. Continue to breathe. And as you breathe, continue to feel the exhales. Let you fill up. And the exhale, inhales let you fill up, that is, and the exhale let you release. Several more rounds of breath. And as you feel that exhale help you release over the next several rounds of breath, just feel where you might need a little extra attention. So maybe there's a weight or a holding in the chest. Maybe there's muscle tension between the shoulder blades. Maybe a tightness in the jaw. And as you notice, just see if you can let the breath really relax you out so that the jaw can release. The shoulders can let go. The heart space can feel a bit lighter. And then as you continue to breathe, let the breath just come completely naturally. Feel the breath. Allow the breath to become your main point of focus. Notice the coolness on the inhale. Notice the touch of the breath on the exhale. Perhaps you feel it on the upper lip. Perhaps it's the chest falling. And as you Sit and breathe with focus on the breath. Give you an idea of what the class is about and invite you to bring an intention to mind as well. So we've all been in this place of upheaval and struggle. So it's so wonderful to see each of you here coming together as community. So we'll share this time, even though it is virtual, building community. And
and building a sense of belonging and togetherness. So welcome, I'm so glad you're here. And I invite you to consider an intention for your class. It might help you on the time, the time that you have on the mat right now. It might help you throughout the day or the week ahead. And the intention that I'm going to invite you to consider is around the idea of recognizing and allowing so that you are recognizing what's going on in your body. You're recognizing what's going on in your mind. And you're allowing that to be just as it is with non-judgment. When we recognize, when we observe and allow with non-judgment, the power or grip or hold that difficult thoughts or feelings have on us can almost magically recede. The hold softens. So I invite you to bring hands to heart space, press thumbs against breastbone, Allow the intention that you choose, if the one I suggested doesn't work for you today, no worries, choose your own, but allow the intention that you will work with for today's class to just breathe through your body. So inhale it into your heart space. Exhale it out through your whole body. And we'll allow this to become even bigger with this next breath, and we'll end that with an open mouth exhale. So with this exhale, lips stay sealed, exhale out. With this next inhale, fill all the way up. Hold it at the top, really feel your intention, and then open mouth exhale, send it out. And allow hands to come back down to thighs or to your mat if you're in corpse pose. And any props that you have, just put aside. You want your block or your stand in for your block to be handy for later in the practice. And then just make your way to your tabletop position. So find that place where knees are under hips, shoulders over wrist creases. And allow your inhale to take you into your cow pose. And your exhale to take you back. Find your cat, press into the earth. Stay here for a little bit. So we're open so tight between the shoulder blade. You might root down through the arms into the earth. Belly button in and up, tuck your chin, spread through the shoulder blades. And then go ahead and move through your cow and cat for the next several rounds of breath. Finding your way into the spots that are tight. So find the tightness between the shoulder blades. And as you come into your cow pose, spread through those pectoral muscles, upper chest. And as you're ready, allow some 3D movement in so that you can get into outer hips. Those places are in the outer hips for most of us are places that are super tight. And as you take these easy movements, really focus in on your breath. See how much you can allow your breath to become your focal point. We don't have music in today's class. So see if you can hear your breath, hear your inhales, hear your exhales. Find stillness back in your tabletop. Root your hands down, wrist creases square to the front of the mat, fingers pointing to the top of the mat. And then with your next exhale, bring it back. Find your down dog, reach the arms long. And then pedal it out. Find that place where you're letting the hamstrings warm up, 
You're getting into those outer hips. And breathe a couple rounds of breath. And then with your next couple rounds of breath, find your way back into stillness and your down dog, reach the arms long, send the hips up and back. Keep the knees bent. Unless you've been exercising before we started, most of us are gonna be pretty cold and those hamstrings are gonna need some gentleness. So with your next exhale, drop it down, find your tabletop. With your inhale, sweep the right arm up, reach it high. Take a wrist circle or two. And then with your exhale, walk the left hand just outside your mat, thread it through, come on down, threading the needle. Reach that right arm as if you want to send it a little farther away than normal. And then decide where you want that left arm. So if you're more open in the chest, you can press that left arm down and work to get that left shoulder over right, meaning more open in the right shoulder, I should say. Or you can reach the left arm up to the sky or even take the half bind. So find the position that works for you and take a few breaths. Big inhales, big exhales. And with your next round of breath, nice and slowly, that top arm is up, bring it on down, and then unthread that bottom arm, sweep it way up high so you can pop out through that whole right side body. And then with your exhale, drop it down, inhale, left arm, sweep it up, reach it tall. And once it's up there, a couple wrist circles. Once you've got the wrist circles done that you need, thread it on through. Set that right arm up so you can press it into the earth to open the right shoulder over the left. If that shoulder is tight, back off. If you need a little bit more, maybe reach up, maybe the half bind. And breathe, breathe right into that shoulder, that left shoulder, taking the warmth of the breath to help have that sense of opening up. Another round of breath or two. And then nice and slowly reverse it on out. Top arm comes back down. Once it's pressed into the earth, unthread bottom arm, sweep it way up high, reach tall, puff out through that whole left side body. And then with your exhale, drop it back down, tabletop. Big inhale in your tabletop. Big exhale. With your next inhale, reach the right arm and left leg nice and long. Left hip point to the earth, flex through the back foot so you can really send long. And then with your exhale, curl it in, elbow to knee, chin tucks, round through the back, hover for a round of breath, exhale, belly button in and up. Inhale, send it out long, reach everything a little extra high. Two more, exhale it in, curl, tuck the chin, round back, press through the left arm. Inhale, reach it long, flex through the foot. Inhale to stay. Exhale, send it back in. Curl, hover. Inhale, nice and long. Inhale again, send everything highest. Exhale, bring it down. Inhale, left arm, right leg, send it long. Inhale, high. Exhale, curl it in. Elbow meets knee, chin tucks, right arm reaches. Next inhale, send long. Send high, exhale, tuck it in. Round through the back, hover. Inhale, nice and high. Reach long, send high, last one. Exhale, curl it in. Round through the back, elbow to knee, chin tucks. Inhale, nice and high, stay. Inhale, higher, exhale, tabletop. Round your breath in tabletop. See knees under hips, leave them in that position and then walk it out on a hatasana, heart to earth. Reach the arms long. If your forehead or chin hits the earth fine, hits the earth, that's great. If not, grab your block or you're standing for your block, rest your forehead on something. Couple rounds of breath here. Reaching the arms long, 
sending the hips isometrically back. From this pose, feel what you need in your heart space. See if that sense of receiving from the earth what you need is available to you at this moment. Breathe it in, another round of breath. And then nice and slowly, walk one arm back under shoulder at a time. So you're back in tabletop. Take a nice big inhale in your tabletop with your exhale. Send it back, find your down dog. Reach the arms long, send the hips up and back. Couple rounds of breath here. See if you can find that place of equal effort to ease in your down dog. By reaching the arms long, sending energy back into the balls of the feet. And know that if any time throughout your practice, that when you get to your down dog, if it's not feeling like a happy home base, just drop into child's pose. It's always a great place to be until you can get your equilibrium back. So with your next exhale from your down dog, take a big step forward. Inhale your way to halfway lift, long through the spine. Exhale to crouch and curl. Come to the balls of your feet, tuck yourself into a tiny little ball. Chin comes up, shoulder blades spread, arms take most of your weight, and then couple rounds of breath to ragdoll it up. So let the arms hang, let the knees stay soft until the shoulders are over the waist. Once the shoulders are over the waist, then sweep the arms up, reach it tall, big inhale, grow two inches taller, and then with your next exhale, goal post your arms, squeeze shoulder blades into the midline, let the shoulder blades lift to heart space, a little bit of a back bend. Big inhale, grow long through the spine and the side body, root through the legs. Next inhale, if you wish, reach the arms high, send them wide. I feel like the inhale helps you receive just what you need. And then with your exhale, palms together, hands through heart space, hinge right at the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway left, long spine. Exhale, bend knees, plant hands, step it back, find your plank. Three breaths in plank to fire up your core. Feel the heels go to the back of your crown of the head to the front. With your next exhale, externally rotate those inner elbows, drop the knees, chin hips next, elbows staying close, you're an inch for asana. Shoulders and fingers same height, then send the legs long, zip them up, tops of the feet press down, inhale, baby cobra. You can float the hands if you wish, one more breath. Exhale, hands come down, come over the toes, send hips back, reach the arms long. Down dog, big round of breath. Big inhale, big exhale. With your next exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Big step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, feel length through the spine. Have your hands connected somewhere. Tailbone to the back of your mat, crown of the head to the front. Then release, forward fold. Take any movements in your forward fold that call to you. So maybe it's pedaling out. Maybe it's some gentle side to side. If you are going side to side, keep those knees nice and soft. Maybe it's opposite elbow, side to side. Nice soft knees, wherever you are. Another couple rounds of breath. Find stillness. So if you have a grip, come on back to center. Notice that low core. Bring that low belly button up towards the spine. A little bit of soft engagement. And then with your next inhale, take it up. Reverse swan diving if the back feels good. Hands to hips if the back is tight. With your inhale, sweep it up. Grow tall. Once again, goal post arms. Shoulder blades lift through the heart space. Root through the legs. Inhale, reach the arms long. Receive, exhale, swan dive it down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, bend knees, plant hands, step it back, find plank. Once again, three breaths in plank pose. While you're there, check the fingers are pointing to the top of the mat. Note your inner elbows, those eyes of the inner elbows. Externally rotate so the eyes of the inner elbows are more towards the top of the mat. 
your choice, you can go eight point pose as we did last time, or join us in Chaturanga, come to the tips of your toes, elbows in close, come down halfway, look to the tops of your feet, press the arms long, inhale, shoulder blades lift the heart space, exhale, send back, down dog, big round of breath. Big inhale, big exhale. We'll flow this sunny, one breath, one movement. With your exhale, bend your knees, look forward, big step or hop, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release, forward fold. With your inhale, strong core brings you up, reach tall, come right into your back bend of choice. Could be goal post, could be reaching arms. Exhale, takes you down, swan dive it down. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Feel that length. Exhale, bend knees, plant hands. Step or hop, jump back, spine plank. One big inhale and plank. Exhale, send it down your way. Could be knees, chest, and chin. Forward chaturanga. Knees, chest, and chin goes to baby cobra. Chaturanga goes to up dog. And then send hips back to heels. Reach along through the arms. Send those legs long. Keep the knees bent as needed. Big round of breath. Big inhale. Big exhale. I'll be cueing some leg lifts. Remember, as everything, it's optional. The leg lifts work for your duo. If they don't, we'll always meet up. We'll almost always meet up in a lunge pose. You can meet us there. So with your inhale, go ahead and sweep that right leg way, way back. Reach it extra high. And then with your exhale, touch those toes down. You can bring the left calf in by bringing the left foot to the ball of the foot. Next two times you reach it up, reach high, keep the hips square, send it down, touch the earth. Last one, inhale way high, hips square, balls the ball of the left foot, exhale, super slow motion, send it through. Remember if your foot gets caught, grab the heel, send it forward, tent the fingers, drop the hips. Big round of breath in lunge pose. With your exhale, drop the left knee, come tall torso. Hands interlaced on the top of that right knee. See how that left hip flexor is feeling. We want to open the hip flexor because we'll be doing warrior one soon. So far if it's tight and if this is where you need to stay. If you're not feeling a stretch in that hip flexor area, find a hip point, sweep the arms up. Raise them up, grow tall through the spine, look up. If this feels pretty good and you want more, goal post or reach the arms long. Once you're here, wherever you are, hips come forward, tailbone down to refocus on that hip flexor stretch. One more big breath, reach spine tall. Exhale, send it down, turn the foot, stay. Next exhale, hip creases, pull back. Flex through the foot, half time in asana. You want left knee right under that left hip point. Send energy so you feel like the hip creases are pulling you back. Flex through that right foot. See if you can find the hamstring stretch from low calf up to the top. The stretch that is from low calf to the top of the hamstring. One more breath. With your next inhale, plant the right foot. Reframe the hands by the foot. Send it back. Plank pose. Inhale, plank. Exhale, take it down your way. Chatter on the up dog. Knees, chest, and chin to baby cobra. Exhale, send it back. Find your down dog, round the breath in down dog. With your inhale, sweep that left leg way high. Then take your three leg lifts, your pace, nice and slowly. You can bring the right calf in by lifting up high on the right ball of your foot with each one. After you are done with your third leg lift, Super slow motion and all the way through, lunge pose. Once you're in lunge, really feel length in your body. Feel like that left shin wants to push forward, although you're gonna keep the knee right over the ankle. Send the right heel back, drop the tailbone. Big inhale, exhale, drop right knee, come tall torso, interlace behind the left knee. Focus on that right hip flexor stretch. Breathe. Go where you wish to go, which might be staying right here. But if you want more, sweep arms up. 
Maybe experiment with the back bend of your choice. Once you're there, refocus on that right hip flexor, bring hips forward, tail them down. One more big breath, go tall through your spine. And exhale, takes you on down. Half hand in the last on the second side. Hip creases bring you back. Send the left heel forward, flex the foot. Drape over that left foot, left leg, but only as much as you need. You want to keep nice sensation, but nowhere near pain. And then keep that sense of left heel dragging into the earth and back as the hip creases send you back as the foot flexes. One more breath. With your next inhale, flatten that foot out, reframe the foot, send back, find plank, big inhale and plank, take it down your way, knees, chest, and chin to baby cobra or chaturanga to up dog. Fill all the way up, let those shoulder blades lift the heart space. When your exhale comes, tuck your chin, send back, breathe. Three big breaths, low to high. Take this next round of breath together. So fill all the way up past your collarbones. Hold it at the very top. Then open out the exhale. Let it go. Beautiful. With your next inhale, sweep that right leg way, way high. Take your hip opener, heel to tailbone, knee to sky. Shoulders are square as possible. And then, if it's comfortable, take a couple hip circles each direction. Little or big, doesn't matter. Just warm up that outer hip. If you'd like, you can do a little core move by sending that right leg long while your hips are stacked. And then nice and slowly, re-square the hips. Then send through to your lunge. Tent the fingers, lengthen the body, root the right foot down, left heel back. And then with your next inhale, Take it up to crescent pose. Reach tall. Make sure your right knee is behind the right ankle bones, left heel like it wants to press back. And then with your next exhale, drop that left knee a little bit closer to the mat to get a left thigh stretch, left quad. One more breath. Inhale, send everything long. You might straighten the legs, but not lock them. If you want to challenge your balance, look up. With your exhale, drop it back, crescent pose. Next exhale, sweep the arms through, pinkies lead the way, shoulder blades press together, 45 degree torso. Then inhale, sweep it back up, crescent pose. Look up, fill up, exhale, send it down, plank pose. Rub your plank, big inhale, big exhale to stay. Next exhale, come on down your way. Knees, chest, and chin to baby cobra or chaturanga to up dog. The inhale fills you up. Exhale takes you back. One round of breath. With your next inhale, sweep that left leg way high. Once it's up there, hip opener, second side. Let the knee point to the sky. Square the shoulders. Take your circles, couple in each direction. Little circle to big, doesn't matter. Continue to breathe. After your third in that second direction, you can send that top leg long, keeping the hips stacked, and then slowly square the hips, bring the leg high, send through, find lunge. Once you find that lunge, feel so long in your whole body. Root down through the, those legs, hug both legs like you want them to come to the middle of your mat. Hug the hip creases, the hip points into the midline. Then with your inhale, sweep it up, crescent pose. Reach it tall, big inhale, big exhale. Next exhale, right knee hovers a touch close to the mat. Only take it down as far as you need to get that quad stretch. One more breath. With your inhale, lift everything long, almost straightening both legs out. Challenge if you'd like, look up. Exhale, back down to crescent. Long through the right leg, right heel reaches back. Exhale, sweep it through. 45 degree torso, pinkies left, shoulder blades squeeze. Inhale, sweep you back up, reach tall, look up. Exhale, bring it down. Chaturanga or 
eight point pose, your choice. Lift the heart on the inhale, exhale, send you back. Finding your down dog. Your pace, take the time to get there. Big inhale, big exhale. One more big inhale. One more big exhale. And then with your next inhale, sweep that right leg way high. With your exhale, send that right knee, if you choose, to your right elbow. See if you can get that ankle bone up almost as high, as high as the knee. One more breath. Inhale, sweep it way back up. Reach it high. Exhale, send it through. Find lunge. Once you've found that lunge, root down. Inhale, rise up. Crescent pose. Reach it tall. With your exhale, sweep through. Pinkies lead the way. Shoulder blades squeeze. With your inhale, one leg Tadasana. Step up. Reach up. Root down to that right leg. If you want a little challenge, you can kick that left leg out. Then we're going to slowly go back almost through airplane pose to send it back into our 45 degree torso crescent. Land down, adjust as you need. Then with your inhale, sweep the arms back up. Reach it tall, look up. Exhale, bring it down. Bring the foot, send it back. Plank, inhale up, plank. Exhale, takes you down your way. Inhale, fills you up. Exhale, sends you back. Reach long, big round of breath. With your next inhale, sweep that left leg way, way high. As your exhale comes, send the knee to your left elbow. Touch it in there. See if the ankle can be as high as the knee. One more breath. Inhale, reach that leg way up and back. Exhale, send through, find lunge. Once you find that lunge, root down. Inhale, rise up, reach a tall, crescent pose. Exhale, 45 degree torso. Squeeze the shoulder blades gently. Inhale, one leg to Dasana. Reach it up. If you want that challenge, kick it out. Then super slowly, come on back. Through an almost warrior three, almost airplane. Landing in crescent pose with 45 degree torso. Inhale, sweep up, reach tall. And exhale, send down. Plank pose. Inhale, plank. Exhale, bring it down your way. Inhale to shine through, lift the heart space. Exhale, send it back, reach long. Three big breaths. Let the breath settle. Refocus on the sensation of your breath. Big inhales, big exhales. Let's take this next round of breath together. So energy all the way out. With your inhale, fill up, low to high, all the way up to the collarbones, hold it. Drink a little more in still. Then open up, exhale, let it go. Beautiful. With your next inhale, sweep that right leg way, way high. With your exhale, knee to chin, round the back. See if you can connect it in. Give it a little kiss if you can reach it in there. And then inhale, sweep it way back up. Exhale, send it through. Find your lunge. Once you find lunge, spin down back heel. See that heel to heel alignment. Make that imaginary line. And then with your next inhale, rise up, warrior one. Take some time to check it out. How are you feeling? If you're more open, you can send that right hip crease back, left hip point forward. If you're tight and the knee is bothering you or the hip flexor is tight, don't worry about that. Stay more open or take a wider stance. See that the knee is in the same direction as the middle toes, knee is over the ankle bone or right behind the heel. Reach it tall as you root down. Big inhale to look up. With your exhale, we're gonna sweep the arms down, pop the left heel up, and just launch it into airplane. One or two breaths in airplane just to kind of find your balance, and then send it back. Drop that left leg down. Reset up, sweep the arms up, warrior one, full round of breath here. Next inhale, reach higher still. Exhale, sends you down, frame the foot. Leg goes long, inhale your plank. Exhale, takes you down, you're away. 
Inhale, fill all the way up past the collarbones. Exhale, send you back. Big round of breath. Big inhale. Big exhale. Next inhale, sweep that left leg way high. With your exhale, knee comes into chin. Round the back, tuck the chin, maybe give the knee a little kiss. Inhale, sweep it way back and up. Exhale, send through, find lunge. Once you find that lunge, spin down, back heel, see heel to heel, rise with the inhale. Warrior one. Once again, check in. How are you feeling on this side? And that left hip crease go back, left right hip point go forward. Then check that knee out behind the ankle bone or over the heel, same direction as those front toes, left foot. Root down through the legs, rise up. And with your next exhale, pop that right heel up as we sweep the arms through and launch it in. Airplane, just about two breaths here to just find balance for a moment, and then set it back. See how slowly you can bring it back down? Reset up, find that heel to heel, reach tall, big inhale. Exhale, bring it down, frame the foot, send it back. Plank pose. Inhale, plank, fill up. Exhale, come on down your way. Inhale to shine through, lift the heart space. Exhale, send back. Breathe. Three big rounds of breath. Exhale to empty out. Inhale, fills you up. One more big round of breath. And then with your next exhale, from your down dog, take a big step forward, top of your mat. Inhale and halfway left, long spine. Exhale, release. Forward fold, root through the legs, lift through the tailbone. Then go ahead and toe heel together. Big toes barely touch, ankle bones barely touch. Fingers can brush the earth, legs grip into the midline, drop the tailbone, inhale, fierce pose. So you can bring the knees back, tailbone down, fire up the glutes, most of the way in the heels. With your next exhale, send hands through heart space, forward fold, engage the low core, sweep it all the way up. Erd bhastas, now arms reach, maybe a little back bend, that feels good. And then with your exhale, Send it back down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway left, long spine. Exhale, bend knees, plant hands, step or jump back, plant plank. Big inhale, big exhale. Next exhale takes you down your way. Knees, chest and chin to baby cobra, chaturanga to up dog. Shine through the heart space, fill all the way up. Exhale, sends you back, reach the arms long. Big inhale, big exhale. With your next inhale, sweep the right leg way, way up and back. With your exhale, send that right knee to the left elbow, so you're gonna twist it in, hover one breath. Inhale, sweep it way back and up. Exhale, send it through, find lunge. Once you have lunge, spin down, heel to heel. Inhale, take it up, warrior one. Once again, come right back to that alignment that you set up the first time. Settle it in. And then with your next inhale, pop that left heel up. Option for airplane or warrior three. We won't stay too long. Airplane, arms are alongside. You could also go hands to heart space. If you want to warrior three it, reach the arms long. One more breath. And then reset it back. Warrior one. Reset as needed. Reach those arms long. Big, huge inhale. And with your exhale, sweep it on down. Inhale back to plank. Exhale takes you down your way. Inhale, shine through, lift the heart space, let the shoulder blades squeeze together to help that heart space rise. And with your exhale, tuck the chin, send it back. Round the breath. With the next inhale, sweep that left leg way high, reach it high. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, twist it in, really use that low left core. 
Inhale, sweep it back up, reach it tall. Exhale, send it through, find lunge, spin down, heel to heel alignment. Inhale, takes you up, warrior one. Find your alignment, find that sense of left hip back, right hip forward if that works for you. And then we'll transition our way into warrior three or a version thereof by popping the right heel up, launching it through. Remember, you can do airplane, you can do hands to heart space, or you can reach those arms long and send that right leg back. One more breath, your version of warrior three. And then bend through the left knee, drop it back, reset warrior one, inhale, reach it tall, fill up, exhale, send it down. Send back, plank pose. Inhale at your plank. Exhale, your way down. Inhale to shine through, lift the heart space. Exhale, tuck the chin, send it back, reach long. Big inhale, big exhale. We'll take this through one more time, adding on just a little bit. Remember, if you're ready to push yourself and that feels good, Please do. If you're ready to back down and maybe just go through warrior one, that's fine too. With your next inhale, sweep the right leg way, way high. We'll just sweep through this time, right to lunge, send it through, find your lunge, spin down, heel to heel, inhale, take it up, reach it tall. Just a little advanced warning, we're gonna end up with an option for standing splits. So if you'd like your block or your uh, standing for a block at the top of your mat, go ahead and grab it, reset back into warrior one. Once you're in warrior one, reach tall. With your exhale, sweep the arms back, interlace, send the knuckles back and down. Let the shoulder blades lift the heart space. Take a little back bend, look up. With your exhale, humble warrior. So you can keep the right shoulder Close to the inner thigh of the right leg, let the knuckles float, and let the crown of the head reach the earth. Hug both legs into the midline of the mat. Don't let that right hip point jut out. Keep it in the midline. One more breath. With your next inhale, we're going to prepare for Humble Warrior Three. So pop the left heel up, drape the torso over that right quad. Remember, you can release the arms and take the Warrior Three of your choice. When you're ready, inhale, step up. Launch it up, send the left leg back. If you wobble, that's fine. Left hip point towards the earth. If you're feeling pretty good here, you can topple your bound warrior three. The release is in to our standing slip. That's where you might want to grab your block. Once you release your choice of when you want to release, square the hips. Keep that right hip point into the midline. Lift the left heel. You have an option to power it back through or just land back and then reset into warrior one. To power it through, hands go to heart space, reach the arms long, back to warrior three, and then step it back. Where we'll all meet up. Warrior one, reach tall, look up, big inhale. And exhale, drop it down, rain the foot, send it back. Vinyasa through, or remember, if you're fatigued, right back to down dog. Breathe, big inhales, big exhales. Let's get ready for the last big push. With the next inhale, sweep that left leg way high. Sweep it through, find your lunge. Spin down, rise, warrior one. Inhale takes you up. Breathe in your warrior one, set it up. And then with your exhale, sweep the arms behind you to interlace. Once you interlace, let the chest lift, shoulder blades lift the heart space, look up. And then with your exhale, on the warrior, left shoulder inside that left thigh, knuckles reach, crown of the head towards the floor. Just about two breaths here. Big inhales, big exhales. And then we'll prepare to launch into our bound warrior three by popping that right heel up. Remember, you can release the arms, any position you want as you're ready, launch it in. Remember, wobbling is good. If you fall out, come on back in. 
If you are feeling locked in and you want to tumble that, topple that bound warrior three, you can bring the torso slightly closer to that, that left thigh. Your release when you are ready is standing splits. So you can release the hands to the mat, send the leg high, back, find that hamstring stretch, and then your choice to come back to warrior one. You want that power move, torso comes parallel to earth, hands come into heart space, maybe transition right into that warrior three. And then when you're ready, launch it back, step it back, warrior one. Reset so you can feel really fit and powerful and strong. Feel your own strength in your whole body in Warrior One. Big inhale, fill up. Exhale, takes you down. Vinyasa through, or, or go right back to your down dog. Your choice. Let the breath fill you up. Don't rush it. Inhale to fill up. Exhale to send back. Couple rounds of breath here. Big inhales, big exhales. Take this next round of breath together, so empty all the way out. With your inhale, fill up, low to high, past the collarbones, hold it, then open mouth, exhale, let it go. Beautiful. With your next exhale, drop it down, child's pose. You can take a wide knee, child's pose, knees on the outer edge of the mat, so you can bring that heart space close to the earth. Or if you feel better and more grounded, you can keep the knees together and drape your torso over the knee. Breathe here. See what you need and see if you can receive what you need with your inhales. Big round of breath. As you continue to breathe in your child's pose, really begin to feel your own strength. In a few moments, we're going to work into some core strengthening poses and see how much you can let those poses help you to feel strong and powerful, capable in your body. And you can do that in any number of ways. You can challenge yourself or you can take a little bit more of a supported pose. So from your child's pose, come on into a supine position on your mat. We're gonna start with forearm plank. So to get ready for forearm plank, you want your elbows just to touch in front of your shoulders, fingers in line with your elbows. So shoulders, elbows that is, are shoulder width apart. And then curl over your toes, and then come on up into your plank position, crown and head reaches forward, heels reach back. And we're going to stay for about 30 seconds. And of course, if you need to bring those knees down, bring the knees down. You can always just press into the arms and build shoulder strength. We'll get more core strength uh, as we go along. So about 10 more seconds. Crown and head reaches forward, heels reach back. Keep breathing, feel your own strength and your own power. Two more breaths. And then go ahead and settle it back down to the earth. Come on to pranam. We're going to reach the arms long. Carbs come together and then lift the palms up over the back of your head as you press elbows into the earth. Press the tops of your feet down. Couple rounds of breath here. So you can just see what you can receive right into your heart space. Fill up. Exhale up. Beautiful. So we're going to take forearm plank into dolphin. And if you'd rather do another forearm plank or another core strengthening exercise that works better for you, that's totally fine. But from your tabletop, forearms come down. You can grab opposite elbows with your hands. That usually helps us put elbows underneath the shoulders and then bring those hands out in alignment, middle fingers in alignment with the elbows. And then come just as you would into down dog. Lift the tailbone up, walk the feet in a little bit, 
Try to keep the shoulders right over those elbows. Really root into the fingers and the inner palm thumb, as well as the pinkies. We'll stay here for about 30 seconds, so you have an option to stay just as you are. Go to forearm plank, or take another pose of choice. If you're gonna stay and you want more, you can bring the heels up so you're on the tips of your toes, and then send them back several times. You have about 15 more seconds. Reach through the arms, forearms root down the earth, elbows root down the earth, palms root down the earth. And keep sending those heels up and back down. Just about five more breaths. Be strong. And then with your next exhale, once again, make your way back to pranam. So allow the whole body to connect back down to the earth. Reach the arms long. Palms come together. Palms to the back of the head. Root down through the elbows and triceps. Once again, connect down to the earth. Feel the tops of the feet press down. One or two more big breaths. We're gonna take our forearm plank and dolphin into Pintamayarasana prep. But we're going to do it in a way that is just doing leg lifts. So your choice, maybe another core exercise if you're not feeling it for um, coming into Pinjara Mayurasana prep. Any core exercise such as a crunch, feel free to take it. If you're ready to move into Pinjara Mayurasana prep, same way we got into dolphin. Elbows under shoulders, palms down, middle fingers reaching, come back into that Dolphin pose, keep the shoulders as best you can over the elbows. And then this is Yogi's choice. Take the leg lifts that call to you. You might do six, alternating legs, keeping the hips square, keeping the shoulders over the elbows. You might take a few more. You might take two and come on down. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing, or what we're doing in this room here, do what is your peak, your challenge, so you can feel your own strength. When you are done, meet up back in child's pose. Sorry, in pranam is where we're gonna meet back up. Supine, hands up over the back of the head. Once you're down in pranam, feel that connection to the earth. Feel your whole body connected to the earth. Feel the elbows, triceps connected. Press those underarms like they want to go closer to the earth. You might find a stretch there. A couple of rounds of breath here. See how much you can feel that sense of grounding down. Beautiful. From Pranam, walk it back up to your tabletop, and then stand tall on your shins, hip creases, hip points over the knees. We're going to come into Ustrasana, that's camel pose. So most of us will want those toes tucked under, heels up high. You're more open, you keep the tops of the feet down. With your inhale, let the shoulders come on up, send them back and down. Palms come to the back of the pelvis, elbows squeeze together. Then lift from the low torso, past the collarbones as you look up, and let your gaze go across the ceiling as the elbows squeeze together. Keep the hip points over the knees. If you feel like it and want and have the room, you can grab one heel and then the other. And then reset, shoulder blades lift behind space, hip points lift you forward, bring you forward. Shin drops back as long as the neck feels good. Two more breaths right here. Remember, come on out if this is feeling crunchy in any spot. If you have your hands to the heels, bring them both back to the pelvis, back to your pelvis at the same time. Squeeze those elbows together, and then we'll knead up, bringing hands to heart space. 
sitting it on down. If your knees are tight, curl your toes under so you can sit on the backs of your heels. If your knees are open, heroes pose. Sit right down on the calves, close your eyes. And take a couple rounds of breath. Really just feel. Return your att attention to your intention. So perhaps it's that intention of recognizing, seeing what's going on, and allowing, noticing with non-judgment. Another big round of breath. And with your next round of breath, blink eyes open, bring hands back down to your sides, come on back into your tabletop. From your tabletop, if you want more heat, to build more heat, that is, vinyasa through. If you're ready to come right back, go back to down dog where we will meet up. Take a couple rounds of breath in your down dog. I'm gonna guide through a hip opener right into pigeon pose. If you know wild thing and would like to take it, please do. We're all gonna meet up and have plenty of time in our pigeon pose. So no hurry if you want to flip the dog. So with your inhale, sweep that right leg way, way high. Take the hip opener, heel to tailbone, knee to sky. Bring the right shoulder blade back in space a touch. Enjoy that hip opener for a round of breath. If you are gonna flip the dog, go ahead and send it on over. If you're not flipping the dog, re-square the hips, send the leg nice and high, and then we'll get ready for pigeon pose. You want that right knee all the way to the outside of the mat behind the right wrist. And then I invite you to take a pigeon heart opener before settling in. So walk the hands back towards the waist, shoulder blades with the heart, look up, fill up. And then as you're ready, tall through the torso, walk it down, find your long spine to come into pigeon pose. Once you're here, flex that right foot that takes a little stress out of the right knee. And then see if you can find that place where you're getting a nice stretch in that outer right hip. If you have more room, you can send right hip back, left hip forward to square the hips. And then relax and let that stretch in that outer hip just happen. You can allow the breath to come right into the tight spots. A couple rounds of breath. If you have a pose that you like to take out of pigeon, then maybe it's just a quad stretch or perhaps it is mermaid or king pigeon. There's no need to take those, but if you feel like it and they're in your practice, you have time. You do want to take the quad stretch. You can walk the hands up, kick up, reach back, left hand to the big toe side of the foot, re-square the shoulders, bring that foot in as you kick it back out, re-square the hips. Find a little quad stretch. Couple rounds of breath. If you took a second pose and need a couple more breaths worth, please take it. Otherwise, begin to unwind your body and send it back. Find your three-point down dog, working out any kinks in that right knee. I'm not kicking the mirror behind you, if you can help that. And then as you're ready, come on back down. Find your down dog. Take a breath, reset. Big inhale, big exhale. With your next inhale, sweep that left leg way, way up. Once it's up, take your hip opener. Enjoy it. Feel that opening. Square the shoulders a bit more if you can. If you flip the dog on the first side, flip it on the second. Otherwise, we'll all meet up in pigeon by sweeping that leg through, knee to the outside of the mat, behind the left wrist. Once again, when you're ready, I invite you to come on into your pigeon heart opener, puff out that chest, squeeze the shoulder blades, lift the heart, 
chin can come up, fill all the way up. And then when you're ready to come down, long torso, settle in, feel your pigeon. Flex the left foot. See if you can square the hips. Make any adjustments that you need so that you can feel the stretch in that outer left hip. Breathe here. Bring the breath right to the tight spots. If you took a pose out of that first side, I invite you to go ahead and take it on the second so you're nice and balanced. Maybe the quad stretch, mermaid or king pigeon if you have those in your practice. Or maybe you're just gonna stay settled in and enjoy that pigeon. Relaxing down. Couple more rounds of breath, wherever you are. And remember, if you took that second pose out of pigeon and want more time, take it. Otherwise, as you're ready, go ahead and begin to unwind yourself, finding your way back to your down dog. Once you're back in your down dog, you might wanna take that three point down dog to find a little opening in that knee, maybe another little hip opener. And then settle it back down, finding your down dog, reaching the arms long, sending the hips up and back, make it feel like that full, big body stretch. A couple more breaths there. See how long you can make the whole body feel. And then with your next exhale, walk it all the way through, coming into seated, and then finding your way back to supine. We're gonna get ready for bridge pose. Walking the heels in, fingers just barely brush the backs of the heels, arms alongside, press the low back into the earth, and then nice and slowly lift the hips. Once the hips are up nice and high, engage the glutes, see if you can lift up the hips a bit higher. And then if you'd like, interlace at the hands, tuck one shoulder under at a time, send the knuckles like they wanna go between the legs, between the feet, and about three to five breaths from here. See so if you can let the chest come up, touch closer to the chin, but gently keep the back of the head pressed into the earth so you have a little more room between chest and throat. Two more breaths. See if you have that ability to lift up a touch higher. Beautiful. And then as you're ready, reverse it out, on interlace, untuck, one vertebra down at a time. Once the last vertebra is down, take a moment to really press the low back into the earth. So option here to take another wheel pose, another bridge pose that is, and maybe you're gonna take a bridge pose that is supported to relax down, perhaps bringing the, a block or what you have for a block underneath the tailbone. But if you like to take wheel, I'll guide through that, but feel free to take bridge or maybe support legs up the wall. So if you're gonna move into wheel, sweep those arms up. Face the palms, crown of head height, elbows point up to the sky. And then as you're ready, root down to rise up, lifting up. Once you are up, see if you can find knees over heels, reach long through the arms. So you can get the elbows into the midline. Wherever you are, another breath or two. Lift through the front body, and then with your exhale, bring it down, reversing it out, tuck the chin if you're in wheel pose. And once you're all the way back down, go ahead and hug the knees in. Give yourself a little low back stretch. Maybe rock a little side to side to massage out the pelvis. And then we're gonna move right into a supine twist. So to find our way to a supine twist, I invite you to bring it back just like you were gonna start your 
way into bridge pose, pose and lift the hips. Scooch the hips only over to the left and drop them down. Then float the knees back up or float the knees up over your chest, arms out at a T, shoulder height, and gently drop, let the knees fall over to the right as you gaze to the left. Couple breaths here. If those knees don't hit the earth and you have a block to support under that bottom knee, give yourself the support that you need. If you need a little bit more, you can press down at the top arm, have that sense of the left hip going in the opposite direction. Couple rounds of breath. And then nice and slowly, allow the knees to come back up, float them over the chest using your core strength. Drop those feet down just like they would be in bridge pose. And this time lift the hips, scooch those hips over to the right, and then go ahead and drop them down. Float the knees up, and then stand them over to the left. Gaze to the right, over the right arm. Once again, find the stretch in your supine twist that you need. Maybe it's placing a block under the bottom knee, maybe it's pressing down with the top hand and giving that sense of isometrically moving that right hip point away. Couple rounds of breath here. And then nice and slowly float the knees back up over the torso. And then go ahead and hug those knees in and transition your way into a non double loss, not happy baby. Grabbing the outside edge of the feet and really take your time to see where you need the stretch. So if you press your feet up to the sky, keep the pelvis connected to the earth, you can rock back and forth and really massage out that low pelvis area that's so tight for most of us. Or you can let that low back roll off, curl off the mat, bring the knees towards the underarms so that you can get a low back stretch and then you can send the legs wide to get a groin stretch or wide and long to get a groin and hamstring stretch. A couple rounds of breath here. And then nice and slowly we'll meet up coming into a teeny little ball. So see if you can bring the knees in, wrap up, grab opposite elbows, chin towards the knees, hug in, one more big inhale, as big as you can, and exhale all the way out, become a teeny little ball. And then with your inhale, go super long, coming into a full body stretch, reach the arms long, send the legs long, flex the feet, and then point the toes. Big inhale, long the stretch. And with your exhale, go ahead and bring the arms back down to your sides. And we will prepare for Shavasana. So take time as you prepare for Shavasana to get what you need. Cover up. One of the nice things about home is you've got your own blankie. Maybe grab your own blankie, sweatshirt, whatever you need. If you find that your low back gets cranky in child's pose, put something under your knees like a bolster or a throw pillow. even take time if you're in a room that has a light to turn the light down. And then once you are settled in, in your most comfortable pose, and really if you're on your back with your arms below heart height, that's perfect. And then take time to Really take some big breaths. So filling all the way up past your collarbones. Letting the exhales send that sense of release through your body as the air comes out. So you might, in the comfort of your own home with the microphone muted, make extra 
loud, long, open mouth, sighing it out, exhales. So that you could really feel that sense of relief, release, and letting go. And when you're ready, let the breath normalize. Come to that kind of breath is breathing you way of being. And really tune in. Note how your body's feeling. And we'll scan through to help release those parts of our body that we tend to hold in. People hold in different parts, but most everybody has a place that needs a little extra attention to release because it's so just the way we are. So we'll start to the pelvic floor. Keep attention on the pelvic floor, but then release your low belly, the belly button away from the spine. So almost like you want to make that belly a little bit rounder, bigger. When you do that, notice that pelvis. Notice that pelvic floor. Even notice the glutes. See how much you can release in all those areas. And then bring attention to low back, that tight spot the lumbar spine area, so you can release there. And allow attention to float up, low ribs, low back, mid chest, mid back, top of the pectoral muscles, shoulder blades. Just see with the next several rounds of breath, if you can bring that sense of healing and opening to all of those areas. And then bring attention all the way up into your mouth and just notice where your tongue is. And then bring attention to your shoulders. If the back of the tongue is connected to the roof of your mouth, Relax it away. Just notice if that helps the shoulders relax. Keep the tip of the tongue connected to the roof of your mouth, but let the teeth fall gently apart. Feel the hinges of the jaw, let go. And bring attention to the back of the skull and where the skull meets the cervical spine and see if you can release there. Bring attention back to the cheeks, temples, the little muscles that support your eyes. Crown of head, top of head, all the way around, back to that point where the skull and cervical spine meet. See if you can relax in all those areas at once. And as we move through the next minute or two of Shavasana, see if you can keep that nice sense of awareness of breath. And of course, thoughts will come in. So when they do, notice them. And just send them on their way and return to focus on breath. If any thoughts are sticky, you can just give the label to the thought that helps unstick them. That label could just be, I'm thinking, or that's a thought. And return attention to breath and relax.
We'll nice and slowly begin to make our way out of Shavasana, but super slowly. So just let any small movements come into your body that you need. So maybe wrist circles, maybe some neck stretches, but bring your chin to one shoulder, then back over to the other. Each time you go side to side in that neck stretch, let the opposite shoulder ground down. Maybe flex the feet, point the toes. And as you're ready, roll to your side of choice. It's often thought that right side is a little more energizing, left side a little more, more relaxing. So give yourself what you need. And find your way into that fetal position. And just feel that, feel your body. Feel your body from the inside. Note how it feels. Then nice and slowly come on up to your comfortable seated position. Finding your way into Sukhasana. You might grab your block, your bolster, your blanket. Sitting nice and tall, keeping your eyes closed if that's possible or when you're ready to. Then bring hands to heart space. Thumbs into breastbone. So in addition to the practice of recognizing, observing, and allowing and seeing what's going on and bringing non-judgment to it, the more that we can also keep reminding ourselves of that for which we are grateful, the better we'll feel. So I invite you to take several rounds of breath we just bring to mind something that you're grateful for right now. And then breathe it through. Really feel it in your body. And we're going to close with a single round of ohm. And remember, I still have you on mute, so you can make so much noise and make it feel so good, and nobody else will hear you. But I invite you to join in. Give it a try. It always feels good, or at least it does to me, and hopefully it will to you. So empty out. Big, huge inhale. Fill up. Single round of ohm. Whoa. practicing in our virtual community. So wonderful to be able to guide your practice in this way at this time. And what I hope is that you'll join us for these next several classes. We're gonna have the classes 10 a.m. on Saturdays, that's 10 a.m. Central. Uh, more beginner friendly on Tuesdays at 5.30 Central. And feel free to send me an email uh, if there's comments, thoughts, suggestions, stuff that you want to do. I'd love to see it. And also, um, in a moment, I'm going to turn off the recording. Um, and anybody who wishes to stay, uh, please stay, because I uh, want to ask a couple questions about uh, community building um, and uh, what we might do to that end. So I'm going to turn off the recording. I'm going to unmute everybody. And then if you do have an extra minute or two to stay, uh, please do.